Welcome, my name is Ashton Lenahan and this is Maria Trakis, Doctors of Physical Therapy, here to talk to you today about injury prevention during yoga. We prescribe yoga to a lot of our patients. We find it extremely important that patients take extra care not to get injured. So what are the objectives of today's talk? So basically we're going to talk about some of the benefits of yoga, discuss the most common forms, review poses that may have an increased potential for injury, discuss some ways to modify those poses, and then provide some tips for overall injury prevention. Yoga. Yoga originated in India in 2500 BC. It's said to be one of the greatest gifts given, up, given to us from the Eastern world. It's a combination of dance, astrology, philosophy, music, math, and medicine. The asanas versus the sattva. A lot of people do yoga and achieve clarity and purpose. Sometimes they go in just to perform the poses and find that they're able to meditate more, able to concentrate better. Increased energy flow often leads to less pain, which is why we find it so important to prescribe yoga to a lot of our patients. It is estimated that about 11 million Americans enjoy its benefits to this day. Yoga is a mind-body type of complementary and alternative medicine. It's designed to promote health by balancing the nervous system, massaging all of your internal organs, releasing excess muscle tension, and improving circulation of the blood and lymphatic system. So who benefits from yoga? That may be a question that you're asking yourself. Basically, anyone can practice yoga. It's for adults of all ages and all fitness levels. Children and adolescents often enjoy yoga as well. It can also be helpful for women who are pregnant or postpartum. Additional benefits include stress reduction. It basically draws your attention away from your busy day and your stresses and helps focus, calming you down as you move through different poses. It can help lead to increased fitness by improving your balance, your flexibility, your range of motion, and strength. It can help with the management of some chronic health conditions such as cancer, depression, pain, anxiety, and insomnia, and it can often help with weight loss by helping to incorporate a healthy lifestyle. These are the common types of yoga. A lot of times when you go to a studio, it can be overwhelming when you look at all the varieties that you can pick from. Just to give you a quick, brief understanding, Bikram yoga takes place in a very hot 115 degree room. It consists of 26 poses performed twice. It's an advanced level yoga, not something that you want to start as a beginner. Hatha yoga focuses on pranayama and breathing. It's great for stress reduction, elongation, and stretching. Vinyasa yoga is a flow type of yoga that encourages the cardiovascular system to work a little bit harder and helps with weight loss and strength. Kundalini yoga is the practice of clarity and awakening. It focuses a lot on meditation and it's really excellent for stress reduction. Iyengar yoga focuses on alignment. As physical therapists, we love this because a lot of our patients have poor posture and improper alignment from sitting at a computer all day. Anusara yoga was developed by John Friend and is about opening of the heart. Restorative yoga is probably the most prescribed yoga by us for our patients because it's for people who have injuries or pain. Prenatal yoga is an excellent type of yoga prescribed for women during pregnancy and is said to help during the birthing process. Unfortunately, there are injur injuries often associated with yoga, which is why we feel it's so important to take extra precautions. Yoga is considered a relatively safe form of exercise, but the injuries do happen. A lot of times the participants are very eager and the instructors fail to give proper modifications to such big classes. People with prior injuries are more likely to also sustain further injuries. It's a good idea to have fundamental awareness of common injuries associated with yoga practice. That's the purpose of our lecture today. Knowing how you may potentially injure yourself might help you to become a little bit more cautious or take the proper modifications. A lot of time, the common yoga injuries can affect muscles, tendons, the bursas, ligaments that hold bone to bone, cartilage, and spinal discs, which is what we treat a lot here at Performance Spine in Sports Medicine. The six poses we're gonna go through with you today are some of the most common that we see. Triangle, upward dog, standing forward fold, plow pose, downward dog, and chaturanga. So this is triangle pose. It's 
been helpful for relieving back pain, especially for women during their second trimester. It's shown to be therapeutic for helping with anxiety, flat feet, osteoporosis, infertility, neck pain, and sciatica. So how can we modify this pose? If you have knee pain, it's important to think about trying to keep your knees softly bent so as not to put, put excessive pressure on the knee joint. If you have high blood, blood pressure, turning your head downward may help with that as well. If, if you're someone who has neck pain during this pose, you want to think about keeping your head looking straight and make sure that both sides of the neck are evenly long so that you're not putting more stress on one side of the neck versus the other. For beginners, you can try practicing this move against the wall and also as you saw in the picture, you can use a block if you can't reach the floor. This is Upward Dog, shown to be therapeutic for asthma, sciatica, depression, and fatigue. There are several ways to modify this as well. There are some considerations for those of us who have back injuries, carpal tunnel, headaches, or pregnancy. It doesn't mean that you cannot do this pose, it just means that you should proceed with caution and listen to your body. If you're a beginner, you want to be cautious not to hang on your shoulders. Try to think about drawing your shoulders away from your ears and pulling your shoulder blades down toward your tailbone. You can also rest your thighs on a blanket or roll for comfort. The third one is the standing forward fold, also therapeutic for asthma, high blood pressure, infertility, osteoporosis, sinus issues, stress, depression, headaches, and insomnia. So you want to perform this pose cautiously again if you have any sort of back injury or surgery or if you have a history of herniated discs. <clears throat> again, you can try bending your knees so as not to put excessive pressure on your spine or your, the back of your knees. So you can place your hands on a wall or a table to also get that stretch with a little bit less pressure on the spine. You want to, again, try not to lock your knees, keep a soft bend at all times, and again, use a block if you cannot reach the floor. The next pose is plow pose or halasana. Some of the benefits to plow pose are that it massages the spinal cord. The thymus also reverses the position of internal organs. Some of the contraindications for plow pose are if you have wrist, neck, or shoulder pain, high blood pressure, acid reflux, or a history of stroke. Some of the modifications you can make for this pose is to go up against a wall or use a block to assist in your lumbar flexion. The next pose is downward dog. Some of the benefits of downward dog are to strengthen and stretch the lower and upper extremities. It's a great integration for muscle strength and balance. It also helps to calm the nervous system. There are many modifications you can make for downward dog, especially for the beginner. If you find it's difficult to keep your back or spine straight with your chest out, you can bend your knees to compensate. You can also face the wall, placing your hands on the wall for extra upper support. You can additionally use a wedge to support your wrists so that they're not in full wrist extension, they're in slight flexion. Some of the contraindications for this pose are wrist and shoulder pain and additionally high blood pressure. The final pose is plank pose, or chaturanga dadasana. Some of the benefits of plow pose are postural stability, shoulder strength, and increased stamina and energy. Some of the modifications you can use to perform, plow po to perform plank pose on a daily basis are to put a block beneath the pubic bone for support. You can place your knees gently on the floor. And additionally, you can use special extra modifications if you have scapular winging or wrist and shoulder pain. So what are some tips for injury prevention? <clears throat> it's incredibly important to warm up. Warming up helps to increase circulation to your muscles, it helps lubricate the joints, and it prepares you for doing some of the deeper poses in yoga. You want to always reinforce alignment. So begin with your feet, work your way up, and make sure that everything is in proper position. You want to also avoid hyperextension, so always keep a slight bend in the knees and the elbows to avoid excessive pressure on your joints. You want to always be mindful. Watch and listen for cues from your body that something is not quite right. Modify poses as you need it for your own body. Use props like we discussed, discussed such as yoga blocks, straps, bolsters, and blankets, and always do your homework. Have a basic understanding of yoga and try in the beginning to take classes with a low student to teacher ratio so that you can get the individualized attention that you may need. 
In conclusion, yoga is a safe form of exercise when performed correctly. Yoga has many benefits for the mind, body, and overall health. Some poses carry increased risk for injury, so it's important to modify your poses and listen to your body. We'd like to thank you for joining us, and we ask you to tune in to our next segment of Yoga Poses for you in your pursuit of health and happiness. <laughs> no. That's it. That's it. Wonderful.